and we're live. Welcome, everybody, to Reverse the Verse. It is Friday, October 21st, 2016. I'm your host, Community Manager Jared Huckabee. Uh, if you've never seen Reverse the Verse before, Reverse the Verse is Cloud Imperium Games' uh, uh, weekly informal live stream with the fans. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the stuff you saw in Around the Verse from yesterday. And uh, this week, we're focusing on members of the UK ship and audio team. So joining us right off the bat is Matteo. Oh, I had it. You know, I, I told you I was going to... Matteo, why don't you go ahead and tell him what your name is? <laughs> yeah, my surname is Cercuone. I was hoping you would, you would give it a try, though. <laughs> I, 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 had, I had my little note with, with the, where, where I, had, I had it typed out phonetically so I could do it, and I, I have something in front of the window so I can't see it. <laughs> so I messed up. So, so Matteo is a, a, a junior sound designer out of Foundry 42 UK. Uh, if you watched yesterday's Around the Verse, uh, you might have seen his wonderful section about creating the sound effects for the Sandstorm that was seen in the uh, Homestead demo at this year's CitizenCon. Uh, Matteo, how you doing, man? I'm pretty good. Hello, everybody. Yeah, so welcome. This is your first time on Reverse the Verse. Yeah. Um, why don't you start off by telling folks ex what exactly you do for Star Citizen? What does a junior sound designer do? Um, sound designer in general is, well, basically, think about it, that the game becomes completely silent, really. And what sound design is, is basically just populating uh, the, old, the, the old game with, uh, with, with, with sounds, um, really. So it comes from, you know, from spaceships to, uh, to just ambiences or just like cloth movements or, um, and, you know, just uh, characters talking as well. Gotcha. So you work on a variety of things. You're not just focused on ships or focused on environments or people. You you kind of float throughout the entire Star yeah. Citizen universe. Okay. Yes, that's correct. Right. And what are and how long have you worked for Star Citizen? Uh, it's been one year and a half now. Year and a half. Yes. Oh, we. I've been here for about a year and a half, a little more than a year and a half. So we probably started around the same time. Oh, probably. Uh, probably. We'll look at that afterwards. Um, and what are so, what are some of the things that are, are that are in game that folks might have uh, that you've worked on that folks might have seen or, or in this case heard? Oh, okay. Um, well, when I first joined, I remember one of the first sounds I did was the sounds for the Avenger, and okay. basically I've been focusing a little bit on the uh, also on the Shan Scout. Um, then most of the time I spend time on the ambiences and on the Foley. All right. All right. Um, so the the Avenger and the the Jean Scout, uh, obviously you've worked you worked on the uh, the Sandstorm stuff, and we'll, ta we'll start to get yes. uh, we'll start taking some questions uh, for that in just a minute. Uh, this, which is a good time to remind folks watching at home or on your mobile device or wherever the heck you happen to may be, uh, we do take questions live during Reverse the Verse. You can submit your questions live through robertspaceindustries.com in the into the chat. Basically, you go to robertspaceindustries.com, select Community up at the top, and then under that you see Chat. We're in the General tab. Uh, please preface your questions with the word question because uh, there's a lot of conversation that goes on there. It helps me pick out the uh, questions from the everyday chatter that goes on and of course uh mateo is a junior sound designer so try to tailor your questions to that which a junior sound designer might be able to answer uh if you're asking when the polaris will be out uh mateo's probably <laughs> not going to be able to help you with that so uh mateo uh yesterday's segment on around the verse uh was about the was about the sandstorm um pretty Pretty interesting. Uh, obviously, we've made the transition in CryEngine to uh, uh, WIs. Yes. We made the, yes. Uh, to, to WIs. Uh, had you worked in WIs before? Is this your first time with WIs? Um, I've worked in WIs before. Basically, I've, I've just been doing my, um, my my graduation as a sound designer. It was all based on WIs. Gotcha. Um, I touched a little bit of FMOD, but I was I was really lucky to join the company after the transition from FMOD to WIs. Because that that was quite quite of a big task to take, really, for the whole audio team. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a it's WIs definitely uh, uh, gives us a lot more. Um, Oh, now I'm having trouble thinking about the word. It's a much more robust sound option than, than what was uh, inherent in crying yeah, when we it, started. It gave us more options to, to just like manipulate sounds in real time and, mm -hmm. and having more, uh, more dynamics, really. Gotcha. Uh, speaking of those dynamics, uh, what can you tell us about how you work with that? Uh, obviously, the sandstorm, sandstorm is a big, giant you know, weather effect, but it starts off very small out in the distance. And then, of course, as either you approach it or... 
if you're unlucky, it approaches you. Uh, how, how do you how do you how do you adjust that? How, do, how does that play into the game? Uh, how do you keep it from becoming this this loud that that just takes over everything in the game? Yeah, basically, we would have the the sound for the sandstorm itself to just come to to come from the actual visual effects of the sensor, but obviously, um, you know, it will be moving on the map. So if we have like metal rattling, or you know, if you're inside a javelin, obviously all the sounds will need to come through, um, you know, to a specific area in the level. So we would have we would have the sound for the um, for sand breeze, or mostly for the for the wind noises just coming directly from the sandstorm itself. But as it moves and it approaches different area, that's where we would place like different um, silent audio, let's call it like that, silent uh, audio trigger spot that we start resonating as the sensor will, will, will approach it, really. Oh, interesting. So depending on where you are in relation to the sandstorm and, and what's between you and the sandstorm, uh, it will actually uh, alter the audio? Yeah, that's correct. So basically you can... Um, you know, you can be on different areas on the map, and you will have a different, um, a different result, like audio-wise, on what, on what will start resonating around you. Gotcha. Now, do you have to create all of those different sounds yourself, or does, or does the uh, audio engine do a pro do a processing on that based on where you are and and what's between you and the device and the, or you um, in effect? Yeah, it's a little bit of, of both. Obviously, we need we need to create some audio for that. So sometimes we use uh, we use libraries, but never comes straight out from the library. Really, we always need to retweak things. Um, and so basically, once once we got all this uh, layer, we call it that way, is like, um, then we start populating the level. And basically, we will have we will let WYs handling with you know what sounds needs to play and how it will have to play. So in the case on the sandstorm. Um, we basically had we 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 call it well it's, it's called a meter really so we will meter how loud the wind will be and based on that we it will um, it will draw the audio from from all the audio trigger spot actually attaching a specific area in the level so that means that if you have like a wind gust that happens. Mm -hmm. We will know exactly what what's the volume um, uh, what's the volume parameter at that specific moment, and that will draw the audio of what everything surrounding. It. It's a bit like a side chaining, mm -hmm. but it's actually the opposite because the side chaining will basically will duck down the sound, um, you know, based on on another sound. Uh, this in this case, uh, we will bring up the level of some sounds based based of how loud the wind is. Wow. I I mean, I knew it was. I knew it was intricate, but I'm sorry. I'm I'm, fan, I'm fanboying out of it. That's really cool. I wish I, wish I had a, a great follow up, but that is actually just. That's just. I'm just thinking. That's really cool. That's, so, that's one of the things that Wise allow us to do. Really, it's one of the tools that are inside Wise, and then you know, you you can we can drive real time parameters. We call it RTPC, basically based. Um, again, based on volumes and people, you know, mostly you can use it for uh, for mixing. But it can again, it can be used for more creative ways, just like we did with the sandstorm. Gotcha. All right, we've got the questions from the fans that have started to roll in uh, right off the bat. Uh, how do you do the different sounds that a ship makes when it starts? Now you said you worked on the Avenger and and you worked on the Xeon Scout. Uh, it's a pretty general question, but how do you how how do you create the different sounds that a ship makes when it starts? Oh, that's. Uh <laughs> so those questions were really that I don't really have an answer in a way that um, we, we we never know exactly. Well, most of the time we we do know when you know how a specific spaceship needs to sound, but we never exactly know how we sound until we start populating all those elements. Usually, the way we approach is that we can you know we 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 start to uh, build our own library. So if we know, for example, the Shan Scout, they ask you for more um, for a less synthy kind of sound, but a more, um, you know, more natural elements in a way. And, and that, that means that we started creating libraries from there. Um, so we end up with like tones and tones of audio files. And from there, we basically, we start taking them and just putting in the DAW, which is our software for editing audio. Um, and then and then from there, it would just be like a matter, like cut and paste. It's like, it's like creating a puzzle with all those little audio elements. Gotcha. And uh, we were talking before the show, uh, you mentioned a bit about how you're getting ready to go back to the Xeon Scout to, to, to rework some of the audio. Uh, what does that entail? 
Um, that means we, we just recently we got some more um, help from the audio coders because the, one of the, the main problems that we had with the ships, uh, with the sounds of the spaceships, is that we didn't have many uh, many real time parameters to describe certain things. So, like for example, maneuvering, like rolling or pitching your ship, mm -hmm. it didn't have. Uh, we we couldn't really work much on that one because we didn't have any um, we didn't have any uh, you know any numbers coming out from the from the engine itself. Okay. Um, so we we got all those new real par all, all those new parameters that just just from the audio coders and that's when really we need to go back and add like much more sounds and just refactoring all of that because gotcha. we want to give more feedbacks to the player really you want to know when you know when your ship is like uh, you know it's just rolling or pitching or um, you want to hear your engine braking we have yeah. engine strains as well so that means if you're going a certain speed and you're braking um, you're just braking there all of a sudden you can have like a ramp up of the engine that, so that you can understand how much the engine is working at that moment gotcha so if so you know if your if your HUD is damaged or broken, or if you're just you know you're you're, you're flying more, you're more instinctual pilot you know you know Luke switch off your targeting computer you, you you can you can you can sort of tell how fast you're going and how your ship is maneuvering based on the sounds that that the different thrusters the pitch and the yaw and the roll are making. Yes, that's correct. That, that's the goal anyway. That's what we're. <laughs> all right. Very yes. cool. Um, uh, another question from the fans. How do all these dynamic sound events mesh with the music? Uh, is, oh. that a, is that a consideration when, when you're working on this? Because I know we have that new, uh, that, that new uh, music system that, that, that mixes and matches stuff. So how, uh, does, does that factor into your sound design? Um, no, really, to be honest, because that, that, that's, that's one of the things that we call it like a mix, that would be a mixed state, really. So um, we just want to make sure that, you know, we had the right sound at the right moment for the right ambience or for, you know, whatever is in the level. And then when the music comes in, that we'll have different mixed states, which will decide what's going to be the most important thing to hear at that specific moment. And that's where, you know, we're going to refactor. Basically, we let, we let WIs handling all of that based on the rules that we put in the game so if we have like an important moment and uh, when the music will need to ramp up then we will start bringing down all the other sound effects okay uh, another question from the fans uh, are the sounds for star citizen going to be positional and i think we know the answer to that and, and will they work with 5.1 6.1 7.1 processing yes um yeah they're, they're basically I would say like 90% of the time, uh, they're all positional sound based in the level. So, you know, if you move your head around, you will you will start, you know, hearing so you can actually understand where those kind of sounds are coming from. Mm -hmm. And regarding the 5.1 and 7.1, that's, that's all... Um, that's all again like handled in WISE itself. So that means um, since the audio is already positional, that for WISE is not it's not difficult to understand. You know, if you have a 5.1 system, that is, it will always be like a 3D. So it will it will start like, going around your speakers. Um, all right, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Uh, <laughs> uh, another question for the fans: uh, How th this probably pertains to uh, the you know the Xi'an Scout work that you've been doing? Uh, how do you create audio for things that humanity has never heard before? Oh, um, it's mostly like playing with, uh, with with different instruments that you have. Really, um, one of the tools that I use is is basically uh, I like I like creating like glitchy sounds really, and that's and that's really what what makes things sounds like not realistic. Um, so you can play with synthesizers. You can play with different different tools. Um, one of one of the way I created some sound for the Shan Scout was basically, um, you know, since they wanted to be like organic, glitchy kind of sounds, I, I just like recorded dog food, for example, or just like vegetables and things like that. It makes like right. really squishy sounds. Right. You recorded dog food. So <laughs> yes. so, so, so uh, obviously dog food doesn't make a sound of its own. You just, just pouring it out of a can, sw sloshing it back and forth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then from there, it was just a matter of just like uh, playing with different tools that we have uh, in the DAW. And and again, it's just a matter of creating different libraries, like an entire library of, of, of sounds that you recorded and manipulated in real time. And after that, again, it's just like a matter of doing a cut and paste and making, making sure that it syncs with the actual animation. Well, all right. Uh, let's see if we can get one more question for you before we let you go um let's see 
Uh, regarding planetary sounds, how difficult will it be to have procedural sounds which key into the different biomes? Uh, obviously, one of the things that we showcase at Citizen Gone is you know, the different biomes that are on a planet. Uh, does does a does a does a weather effect sound differently if it's going over a snow biome versus going over a desert biome versus a jungle biome? Yeah, yeah, of course it will. Uh, we don't have all the tech ready for that um, right now. But the idea is to have, again, like all the different positional sounds in the level and each each different audio trigger spot, each different sound, we can have a blend between different sounds and they can change according to the weather, according to the wind, uh, according if it's daytime or nighttime. And it's all... It, it's all we're trying to do things as dynamic as possible, really, because um, you know usually you would have a bespoken event on a game and you would know exactly what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. And in those cases, it's a bit it's a bit different, really. And um, it's it's more like trying to combine um, different solution, uh, different idea for different solution. It's not there's never like one solution that address that address them all. Gotcha. Uh you mentioned that a sound might sound different between day and night? Yes, that's correct. So one of the things would be like the ambiences, for example. So if you're in the desert, the, um, you will have a specific ambience. If it's, um, you know, if the temperature is quite high, you will have a different ambience. If the temperature will drop down, it will be nighttime, then you will have a different ambient sound. Wow. All right. I hadn't thought about <laughs> that, but that, that, makes, that makes sense. You, you, you just made a disco look a little silly yeah that, that totally makes sense i just said all right so um mateo uh thank you for taking the time to speak with us on reverse the verse um guys that was mateo sequani sequani yeah oh, close, <laughs> close. Uh, junior, yeah, sound, close. junior sound designer out of foundry 42 uk uh we're gonna take a break and come back with uh, vehicle art director mr nathan dearsley all right thank you very much back with vehicle art director mr nathan dearsley a reverse the verse pro at this point you're a veteran reverse verse what is this the your your third time on the show nathan yeah third third time so uh, yeah. thanks for coming on again it's um, okay we, we actually this is actually the first time we've talked in a while we didn't we didn't get to do the pre-show talk that we normally get to do so how you doing man i'm okay mate i'm okay busy really busy um the citizen con run up was uh interesting and and kind of yeah so yeah we got a lot done um <laughs> and it's kind of you, you go from it's the saying you know out of the frying pan into the fire so we're, we're headstrong now for the end of the year um so yeah there's a there's a lot going on um a lot of uh, yeah i mean every day's uh, a, new, a little new adventure at the moment so yeah. it's good yeah, no, it's, a, it's, it's a pretty busy corridor this time of year every year b between from from gamescom to citizen uh to the anniversary to the holiday yep. and then of course we you know work on 2.6 work on 3.0 uh work on the squadron vertical slice so um, there's there's a there's a lot of pans in the fire right now Yes, yeah, there is. And it's just uh, the, that that end of year holiday is always uh, well required. Well, as a as a as a vehicle art director, you probably don't have a lot to do during this time, right? Um, I wish <laughs> I wish that was the case. Um, no, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we're just super busy. We've got we've got a significant amount of ships. Um, coming on board for the PU, um, which I, you know, I can't, we really can't talk about this, this moment. Um, we got a lot of work being done on the legacy ships, um, which, um, I, I can't talk about either. Um, there's all the ship item work and whatnot that's being done for the multi-crew stuff. So there, there's a kind of huge gameplay push for that as well. Um, there's obviously squadron ongoing. There's the, there's, there's all the new mechanics to think about. Um, and yeah, I mean, we went over the schedule kind of 
I think it was day four yesterday, and and it it was it was going a very long way into the distance. I can't say when, but um, the I think he kind of got the gist of what was going on. I mean, the primary the primary focus from certain cars, we just kind of want to focus on on bringing everything up to a certain standard, and and that includes you know some legacy ships that Chris kind of wants to to kind of you know he doesn't want these things left behind, so he wants to give them as much love as as, as the the new stuff that we've done. So. They're coming back into the schedule to kind of, you know, so so the game runs better. You know, the, yeah. the older ships are more expensive. So, yeah, yeah, yeah that's there's there's a there's there's a lot. There's a lot. Okay. Uh, now, when you say expensive for anybody who, you know, it's, it's all, every reverse reverse is somebody's first reverse reverse. So when mm-hmm. you're talking about expensive, we're talking about you know resource costs in the game and stuff like that. Uh, we've yeah. already discussed. Uh, you talked about some of the legacy reworks. We've already discussed uh, publicly that uh, the 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 ever requested uh, cutlass rework is in progress um, yeah. that 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 uh we're, we're approaching reworks on the 300 stuff all those old legacy ships to bring them in line with the original ships uh again for those people who have never seen a reverse the verse before this is their first time you are an art director for star citizen that works out of uh, foundry 42 uk um you i was just about to ask you you know Give us an overview of the kind of things you worked on, but I think you pretty much just did that. So, uh, folks in chat, uh, if you have questions for Nathan Deersley, he is a art director for all of our vehicles in Star Citizen and Squadron 42. Uh, you can submit your questions in chat at robertspaceindustries.com. Please remember to preface your question with the word question in capital letters surrounded by brackets. It does help me pick it out from all the other uh, conversation that's going on. Now, Nathan, yesterday in Around the Verse, uh, we, we, you spoke of, at length about the crash javelin that mm. was in the homestead. Now, for yeah. many folks, that was the first time they've seen the javelin since the concept. Yeah, think, sorry about that. <laughs> it's like I don't think we've shown it. I don't think we've shown it to him. Uh, I did. It was quite funny when we recorded the when we recorded the footage for that. I actually sort of pinged out. It, it kind of dawned on me. I was like, you know what? <laughs> no one's seen this ship intact yet. Yep. And and I actually apologized on the thing. I don't think that made the cut, but it's just like, yeah, really sorry. Whoever's got one, I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's there. You can fix it if you want. Um, but no, it was it was it was really kind of um, um, a domino from the Starfarer stuff that we'd done. Yes. And and I spoke briefly about at that time, you know, wanting to kind of this thing needs to scale. This this kind of work approach needs to scale. And um, myself and Chris kind of caught up and, you know, and it, it, I kind of like shot myself in the foot um, to some extent and said, look, you know, everyone's seen Starfarer now. It's done. Like, we need to move on. Like, you know, we've, we've, we can do this stuff. We need to kind of like make sure that it's going to scale and it's going to work. And it does. And, you know, it's it's by no means 100% finished right now no. um, because, it, you know, there, there, there was, you know, the demo, there's a deadline and you, you always want to take a little bit longer to kind of get things resolved. But um, it's, it's, it's kind of like there in its foundation. So... Um, we've got a really kind of with 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 the that capital ship, the 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 downed Idris as well, um, and the Starfarer. You see the Cutlass. There's that workflow is kind of resolved, um, nice. and and so this becomes a really good um, a really good point of interest now for the planets when they go live. So, you know, like I said to you before, like. Don't expect to see all the time these massive kind of epic wrecks um, mm. in a desert. Um, I think it's just as powerful to just see a like a bunker door in the floor, and you actually drop down, and then you realise, oh, actually, I'm inside a ship yeah. that's got buried over the over time. So there's there's the, it just it, it's it's about creating options and about creating gameplay. Um, and and yeah, I think I think we're on the right path with that. I think it's I think it's going to be pretty good. Gotcha. Uh, now, one of the things that I've noticed as a fan, and you can you can feel you feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but mm. uh, you, you you story is very important in a lot of what you do when you when you're when you're designing a a, a ship that's that's fully functional or, or derelict like we like we just saw yeah. a story a story seems to inform a lot of your of your decisions. Uh, what what can you tell us about that? So. Um, it's kind of a double-edged sword. So there's, there's, you've got as a vehicle guy, you you kind of want to go off, and you you've got this, um, should we say, this trait 
that, that, that you kind of want to make things aesthetically pleasing. The shape needs to kind of work and you're making these beautiful ships. And, you know, if you're going off or, you know, design, you almost, you, you're creating sculptures, right? There's mm. a sculpture. Um, but a sculpture without history is just a thing, right? It's just a thing that's just there, in my opinion. And as I tapped on in the video, like, we're all kind of, we're all environment artists. I spent a long time being an environment artist. And one of the things that, that kind of always, always was a, a very kind of important thing to get across was, was some kind of history um, it, it, to, to put into the environments that you're creating, or if not history, a future. And if you can, if you can kind of create this with a kind of a, a background script of, and tell these little ambient stories of, you know, oh, there was a dude in the vent there, or why was he in the vent? Okay, and it's like it's like Newt when you see Newt in Aliens, and it drops, she drops down into where she stayed, and she's got all the little toys in the corner, and she's got marks on the wall, photo of her parents. There's all these little things that that, that are so easy to do, and and you think about it from the ground up like that, and it, it's just that extra layer of it's just that extra layer of kind of you know thought that goes into these things. Mm. Um, and and I, I just really like that stuff. And, and as I said in the video, it's a break for the guys to, to try and do that because we can't we can't really do that in the PU because if, if I go off and I you know I put in a javelin bridge on on the captain's console a photo of his wife, uh -huh. uh, at the moment everyone's going to have a photo of his wife on on that thing. So there's there there are systems on on the horizon to sort that stuff out. But like as soon as we get a little nugget, oh, we can tell this little story. It's great, and that's why like squadron like is is kind of a bit of a, rel a relief for that stuff as well so we've got the idris on the go and now it's starting to get all these kind of like little personal touches in into into these spaces that kind of make it feel like it's lived in and not just um you know not just a a, a, a sterile kind of box gotcha. yeah and to and to some extent uh when that day comes, you know, in mm -hmm. the future, our fans will be able to decorate, you know, their, their, uh, their ships to an extent the same way that they can do it in their hangars and stuff like that. So that'll be a big yeah. part towards making uh, my Idris mine versus your Idris yours. Yeah, like there's 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 all these kind of systems that you can kind of. There's also the main the maintenance side of things. So you've got like um, another thing that, that that we kind of are, 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 we want to achieve is. That if you don't clean your ship, it's going to get dirty and it's going to fill up with 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 rubbish and 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 whatnot. And there are these systems in place that we can kind of prototype that now, hmm. um, and that's something that I would like to do. I'd love if you know if you you play the game and then you kind of log off for a month and you come back and then <laughs> your ship's just in complete disarray. I I, uh, I would love to see to see stuff like that, and it's definitely something that we 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 will be pushing for. But um, not not right now, not right now. But the the systems are there. I mean, it's flow graph driven. That's that's a, a flow graph against the against the kind of um, a system that injects kind of litter and marks on the walls and stuff. is is fairly straightforward to do. But it's how you store that information on the server. That's the tricky bit. Yeah, I, was say, I, I will probably have the most run down, beat up spaceship imaginable because it's as would I. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. It's there to be used. Yep, I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Blade Runner versus Minority Report, man. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm a used future guy. So, cool. one, one of the reasons we get along. All right, so we got some fan questions here. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be an RTV without questions about the Redeemer. Uh, it, there, there's a number of them, so let's hit this right away. Get this out of the way. Uh, in that long pipeline, we're not going to ask you to, where, to say where it is because you know, these things shift all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. But is the Redeemer on that pipeline? Uh, yes, it is. And if you want a little bit more information of kind of um, what's going on there, I'll, I'll speak quite openly about it. Sure. Um, obviously, the, the Redeemer is... Um, it came from TGNGS, um, the, the Nest Ray Starship. And uh, it was at a time when, should we say, the project was in its infancy. Um, and obviously having people off-site kind of make these things for us is a fantastic idea and it's great. But, um, you know, it's got to a point where we're realizing that, again, it, it's kind of linked to the legacy ship stuff. The, a lot of stuff kind of wasn't really kind of resolved at that point. You know, the standard metrics, how, how big is the doorway, how steep is the staircase, how do you get into a turret, can we reuse those turret metrics and animations for other uses and stuff like that. So we've got all that information now, and it's really a case of, like, we're going back, we're, back, we're kind of going back over these things 
um, and, and, and the legacy ship and making sure that they work with those new systems. Gotcha. Uh, and it goes above, it goes way above that. I mean, that's just the basics. I mean, we've got all the ship components coming in. The ship won't be able to function with these. And these are these are actually going to be physical things that you can interact with in your ship. You know, if they're not there, the ship will not function. So there's there's these layers that are coming in that's good, that, that's going to be, Kind of, for me, it's going to unlock a, a lot of really cool gameplay. Yeah, um, so and, and it gives and it gives you know a, a, a thing for me is just like a lot of the ships you you look at them and it, and you kind of can't put your finger on what that space is for. When okay. you're making it, when you're making a bathroom, you know it's a bathroom because there's a bath in it on the toilet. <laughs> but it's just like there's a lot of spaces where you're just like, oh, you know what? I'm not. I, what can we do here? How can we give this place purpose? And the components are feeding into that and we're just like oh you know what like the shield if the shield generator is going there we should totally dress it like this and and that's 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 a positive thing as well so but the, the redeemer for sure yeah it's 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 we know how important it is and it is on that list yeah so i mean just the fact that it's in the hangar right now that that was the model that paul delessi and the team there yeah. you know created and we just brought it into CryEngine. but it has to be rebuilt with all the component system in mind with the metrics in mind so it, it's got a substantial amount of work yeah it's the the they're just incredibly complex ships um and you know i've i've got quite a lot of experience um and i've i've handled some really kind of complex models in the past and i get a little bit of a fear factor <laughs> even now when i open a max file and i'm just like uh, max is 3ds max is the program that we make the ships in and it's it's really complex um and there's a lot of dependencies on one another um but yeah, it, it's 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 kind of crazy in a lot of respects, but the, it, it's worth it in the end when you pull it off. Yeah, it so, is actually pretty much rocket science. Yeah, <laughs> in many respects. Yeah. All right, so in the pipeline, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. All right, we mm -hmm. have a question here that actually matches a question that I have that I, that, I, that I've wanted to ask you for a while. And for some reason, I've never gotten around to it. Uh, God. Uh, yep. Will Starfarer captains get a chair in the captain's quarters? Why, do, why does the captain have to stand at his desk? Um, <laughs> I want to... Um, yes. The answer is yes. It's, it's kind of amusing because um, the artist that made that is Matt. Um, and um, and it, it was a sort of an ongoing joke between us all when we were making it. Um, not in, I mean, not in a joke as in like, oh, 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 let's not just put a chair there for the lols. It was a, it was a case of a few people went up and said, well, where's the captain's sit? And, and we were like, oh yeah. And it, it's kind of like something that it wasn't there in the concept mm. and I can't, I can't remember why it wasn't put in, but it will be put in. It's, it's, it's a bit of a given really that, that, that the captain would want to sit at a desk. Anyone would want to sit at a desk. Mm -hmm. So it, it will get put in. Um, and when that will be, I won't say it wouldn't take long to fix that. It's all right. At least we have that one moment when I does their transcript to reverse the verse. We have our one bold moment of important stuff. We'll start for We'll eventually <laughs> get a chair. They'll bold that. All right. Uh, another question from fans. Uh, we just saw, the, the, the destroyed uh, javelin. Uh, any chance of seeing the javelin in its normal state sometime soon? Ask, ask the big boss. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, the big boss being Chris. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we He was here this week, actually, and, and we kind of went over the ship. Um, there's like... There's two internal areas left to do. Um, one of them is fairly significant. It's the, it's the cargo bay. Um, and and there's kind of the, the the ship has been designed really well actually so it's been designed like um, how I had expected to so you've got like, the sub decks are engineering and and the mid deck is is all habitation and the top deck is all technical so you've got this beautiful kind of separation um, on on each of the decks and we've 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 got this um, we've got this lift at the front of the ship and there's obviously a lift at the back to balance the movement out but it, the internal kind of route. Um, but we've 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 done a really kind of nice little touch on the front where there's a very kind of thick glass panel, and you've got these two forks at the front of the javelin to go away. So I said, you know, I said to the guy, so when you're in this lift, I want to I want to feel like I'm looking down Fifth Avenue, these kind of huge structures going away from you when you're in the lift. So it's kind of quite cool. There's a lot of there's a lot of cool little touches going into it. There's two two main areas to kind of get to what we call Lod Zero, uh -huh. um, and then and then once once Lod Zero is done, it's a case of go through, you profile it, you optimize it. 
Um, and then and then she's ready. Turrets are done, thrusters are done, body's done. It's all there. Um, it, and uh, yeah, I want to share it. It's just it's, it's when, when, when the boss is happy to. Fair enough. That's pretty much the case on all things here. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, obviously, the Idris is an Aegis ship, and the Correct. Javelin was an Aegis ship. Uh, how Correct. much did working on the Idris help you with when making the Javelin? Yeah, the archetypes, which are the, the archetypes, but are obviously like technical habitation all that kind of stuff um you reuse them um so you know you get into you get into a case where you can pretty much kind of block the ship out using the existing assets from ages um and then it's a case of okay you know this is just too the too much of the same let's like remix it a little bit um so it does save us a significant amount and i think kind of on the schedule when you when you when we, we optimize around kind of 40 percent less time um, to say if we're okay, if we're going to start a new multi-crew ship now with like a substantial interior, mm. for example, a MISC ship, we would know that we've got 40% of that covered already with the existing assets that, and textures and shaders that already exist. And then it's a case of, okay, well, we'll, we'll the other 60% is what makes that ship unique. Gotcha. Makes sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, uh, recently, we just revealed the Polaris, which is a yeah. capital ship, but not in the Aegis line, in the RSI line. So, mm. uh, so uh, uh, have, you, have you started the process of imagining what a what a capital ship, what the interior of a capital ship made by RSI is going to be like? Um, yeah, it's it's kind of interesting you say that. So, the the Bengal, um, which has been in production that we showed a little while ago. Um, obviously, we haven't shown all of that. There's the hangars that you've seen. Um, the bridge on that ship is four stories high, and yes. there's another additional kind of um, two stories above that in a, in a sub kind of um, sort of bridge, should we say? Um, and then we've got all the corridors. We've got the ready room. We've got habitation. We've got the toilets. We've got the showers. So we we had an awful lot of stuff already, and it was actually like Dan who originally kind of like done the, the raw concepts for that stuff, like the, the overall kind of profiles of what a bulkhead should look like. You know, if you look at, if you spawn next to an RSI wall, you should know within two seconds you're in an RSI ship. And that's just, just through bold, bold kind of um, approaches of, of, to an angle. So the RSI stuff will always slope away from you at 30 degrees or slope into you at 30 degrees. And if you're gonna have the two slopes on one wall, generally one is roughly around 60% dominant over the other one, hmm. right? Yeah. So, and, and in that way, like if you spawn an Imperial ship or an Imperial hangar, like you get it, but not just because of the, the colors and the tones, but also it's very kind of, um, it's very brutalist. It's very kind of monolithic in, in, in when you break it down. And that's what we wanted to push for the Bengal stuff, simply because the scale of that ship, you had to have a more primitive approach to the art so how do you make less go further and that's why i've done that and that almost kind of like dictated the art style and then it's a case of um you know dan kicked off on the polaris with paul and and, and the concept team and for sure that like he came to us and i said look take all this stuff like we've made all this stuff already and see how far you get and it, and if you look at the concepts and you look at the stuff that we've shown in bengal you will see roughly about 40 percent of reuse and the 60 percent to make it unique and that's 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 a given no, that's uh, game development in a whole, right? The, the the first things are always tougher to make than the second things and the third things because you want to iterate as much yes. as possible. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the first things are always a case of you, 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 you're kind of that's where you make the mistakes. <laughs> But it's also it's also the play time. It's the most creative time, and then you kind of like with the rest of the the stuff. Then you kind of lock into a a mode of this has to be done by this date, um, and it has to be done to this budget because you've worked all of that out before. Gotcha, and that's where we're at now. So uh, yes, yeah, we are. I mean, there's there's obviously there's there's the other there's the Banu stuff on the horizon and whatnot. So you know the first the first iteration of that in the game is is again it's going to be a case of okay, this is really unique compared to everything else that we've got. How do we efficiently kind of create this and, and make it also look as good as it possibly can? So yeah. yeah, there's there's always that challenge with games. With films, it's okay, you hit render and it's all good. Just like put the camera there, it's done. <laughs> Um, with, with games, it's, it can be studied from anger, every angle. Every angle. Has to, yeah, and it has to hold up. Yeah, and, and people will zoom in. They, they will stick their faces right into a corner and look yep. right into it. Yeah. Yep. All right, Nathan. Well, you just survived your third appearance on Reverse the Verse, so thank you. Thank you. See, That's I, okay, I, man. It's, 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 it's not terrible, is it? 
No, it's okay. I, I'm the first time I was really nervous, and um, and now it's okay. It's 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 good. I enjoy it. It's it's good. Oh, good. We enjoy having you here. So thank you, thank you again okay. for taking the time out of your your very very busy schedule to sit down yep. with us and chat with the fans, uh, guys. That was Nathan Deersley, art director for Foundry Forty Two. Um, and with that, that's Reverse the Verse for Friday, October 21st, 2016. Yes, I had to look at the date because I didn't remember right away. Um, our uh, things going on this weekend, uh, if you're in Germany, uh, there is the Fan Run SitCon event. It's happening in Frankfurt. You can check that out at citizencon.de if you want more information on that. Tickets are still available. Uh, also, we have a free fly going this week for all for everybody who registers an account. So if you're an existing backer or you've got a friend who's just interested in trying out Star Citizen for free, uh, they can register an account on robertspaceindustries.com and they will have a awesome, awesome F7CM Super Hornet waiting for them on their account. So that goes from today until October 31st. So you can check that out. That should activate... Uh, Sometime in the, this afternoon. Uh, it, it is 8.41 in the morning here, so it should activate sometime this afternoon. If it's not active already, it's, it might be. So check that out. Free fly for the next two weeks. Uh, next week, right back here on Wednesday, we have our subscriber town hall with uh, Eric Hyron Davis and Forrest Steffen and Sean Tracy. So get all your technical questions uh, ready for that. Uh, that's on Wednesday at noon Pacific. With that, I'm Community Manager Jared Huckabee. Again, that was Nathan Deersley, Vehicle Art Director for, for Foundry42UK. Take Cheers, it easy, guys. everybody.